in this section we're going to talk about the heat of reaction. Heat of reaction is basically this heat, which is symbolized by Q, that's either absorbed or evolved by a reaction system to retain a fixed temperature under specified conditions, such as pressure. So basically there's going to be two classifications, either the heat's being absorbed or being evolved. And the other thing is to get out of this is that heat is symbolized by the variable of Q. So for an evolved reaction, it's an exo, it's classified as an exothermic reaction. So heat is evolved and the sign for Q is negative. So the system is giving off heat to its surroundings. So the system is the yellow liquid inside of here, surroundings is the flask, the air above it, and even this. So when you put your hand to this, it's going to feel warm for an exothermic. Okay, so the other classification is for an endothermic or when it absorbs heat, Q is positive, <clears throat> and that means that heat is coming in from the system, so the flask is going to feel cold to our hands. So here's a summary. Endothermic means that energy is added to the system, Q is positive, the system temperature will increase because I'm adding the heat, I'm adding heat to it, but the surroundings is going to decrease so it's going so to us being the surroundings it's going to feel colder for an exothermic heat is removed or heat's being given off by the system emitted by the system so heat is negative or Q is negative so the system temperature decreases but to us in the surroundings it increases so you have to pay attention to whether you're talking about the system or the surroundings when you're doing heat of reaction problems so in this video, here, we're going to see some heats of reactions. Hi, I've got a couple of demos loaded up and ready to go. And uh, one of these is going to go ahead and give off heat, and the other one's going to have heat taken in. So uh, I've got a... Uh, beaker of water at room temperature. The uh, red display shows that it's near 20 degrees C room temperature. And I'm going to lower the temperature. And I'm not going to do so electronically like with um, a freezer. And I'm not going to do it with ice. I'm going to dissolve a solid, which is actually going to uh, promote an endothermic process. The uh, solid is called ammonium nitrate. And I have the formula on the board. And I'll point that out to you in just a moment. What's going to happen is water molecules will surround this. And the reaction actually sucks in energy. So we're going to see a nice little uh, temperature decrease here. So as I tap this in and it's stirring, we're going to see the temperature decrease. So on a good day, it'll drop down to about zero degrees C. So it looks like we've got seven and it's continuing to drop. The driving force for this reaction is the dissolving. The uh, ammonium and nitrate ions are being surrounded by water and it's going to a state of more disorder, as we say, and it's making the reaction happen. But in the process, think of it as like an energy vortex. Heat from the outside, heat from the water are sucked in to uh, make the reaction proceed. Oh, and very good, it keeps dropping at five. There aren't too many of these reactions, so this is rather novel. I also give it the nickname of the cold pack reaction because these first aid cold packs, these little plastic bags with an inside bag, are available at pharmacies. And what will happen is if somebody bumps themselves like in the playground, somebody might come running over with one of these cold packs. What they do is snap it, and it's mixing the water on the inside with the ammonium nitrate, and it's spontaneously going cold, as demonstrated. Another um, little process loaded up here is just a simple combustion. I have some methanol, which is a one carbon alcohol. And I'm going to spray some on the counter and just go ahead and light it on fire. And uh, flames are given off a sign that we have heat, and I'll give personal testimony. It's warm. We have yellow, orange, blue flames here. It's combusting. Heat's given off. That energy that's given off as heat came from chemical energy to begin with. Bonds are being broken, which costs energy, but then new bonds are being made, and energy is being released. Let me go ahead and show you the processes up here on the board. The uh, left side... So here's the link to that video if you want to go watch it. <clears throat> my, vin my internet's slow. I should have downloaded it first, so it's a little blurry, but you could see the important part. So now this problem says the decomposition of ozone to oxygen. So ozone is the layer of above the atmosphere that helps keep the atmosphere inside. Um, 
to oxygen is an exothermic reaction. So therefore, what is the sign of Q? So being exothermic, being exothermic here, we just saw that, oops, uh, exothermic, that means Q, Q is going to be negative, okay? And if, it, if I touch it, will it be cool or warm? And since it's gonna be exothermic, to the surroundings, it's going to warm up, so therefore it's going to feel warm, even though the temperature of, this, of the ozone itself is decreasing. In this one, it says that I have ammonia plus oxygen plus methane goes to form uh, two um, cyanic acids plus water, and so the reaction evolves 469 kilojoules of heat per mole of HCN. So therefore, if it's evolving, oops, if it's evolving, that means that it is exothermic, okay? And this is per one mole of HCN, so the second question is what is the value of Q when it's two moles? And so it's just going to be two times the 469 to be eight, and I do this ahead of time, three, um, 938 kilojoules, and of course it's negative, because of the fact that it is uh, exothermic there. And so Q then is gonna to equal to a negative 938 kilojoules, okay? Now we're gonna look, the other part of this is enthalpy. And for what we're gonna be looking at, Q at constant pressure is basically the change in enthalpy. So the enthalpy is the inner is the internal energy uh, plus the pressure times the volume. And it's a property of all matter, and we're gonna use it to find the heat of reaction, which is basically, so enthalpy of reaction and heat of reaction are basically the same thing. That the change in enthalpy for a reaction given a fixed pressure. And it's always gonna be the products minus the reactants, and products in this case means final, because the products is what's, fi what's formed, so this is final minus, and the reactants are the initial, okay? And the last thing of this section has to do with an enthalpy diagram, and that's shown here. Uh, this one is an exothermic reaction because my products have a lower energy than my reactants, so it's giving off energy, so I lose energy. Uh, we're gonna come back to this in the 1212 course and talk about what activation energy is. It's not that it goes straight from here to here. It has to overgo a hump. And for an endothermic reaction, the reaction gains energy. So therefore, the reactants are at a lower energy than the products. Uh, the figures in the book I don't like as much, and so I like these type of figures more, but it gets a little bit more confusing with things like activation energy. But the energy, the heat of reaction is the red here, and it's the difference between the energy levels of the reactants and products, and the same thing true here. This one's going to be a negative energy because it went down. This one's going to be a positive energy, but it's still the difference between the energy of the products and the reactants. Okay, and that is the end of this